citizen. I am your host, Tia Carol Jones. I'm here today with Erica King, president of Greenwood Archer Capital. Erica, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, myself. Yes. <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Erica King. I am president of Greenwood Archer Capital, uh, which is a CDFI organization here in Chicago. Me personally, I actually um, born and raised Chicago. Um, you know, we talk about Chicago being an area where we talk about our high school. So, mm -hmm. graduate of Whitney Young High School. Okay. And um, just really grew up in banking and lending and just gained an appreciation for working with small businesses. Um, I'm also a mom of two and uh, married to my wonderful husband. All right. Great, great. Greenwood Archer Capital was formerly known as Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives Microfinance Group. Why was the name changed? It just took you about a minute to say the name. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so the first reason why we changed the name was because it was too long. Okay. We had to take breaks in right. between when we're introducing ourselves. <laughs> um, you know, another reason was that it, it closely resembled the name of our parent company, okay. which is Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives. Mm -hmm. And they are a real estate developer. Our organization is a small business lender. And so there was often a lot of confusion with that name and we needed our own identity. And you know, it was very important to us to have an identity that really spoke to the work that we were doing in the space of providing capital to small businesses. So we needed to come up with a name that fully encaptured our work and the impact that we've had since 2012. Okay. And so for people who don't know, what is a CDFI? Yes, a CDFI stands for a community Development Financial Institution. It is recognized by the U.S. Department of Treasury, and we're basically, you know, a responsible lender that is committed to serving the needs of underserved small businesses. And so for people who are not familiar with microfinance, what is it and how does it help small businesses? Yeah, so microfinance generally means uh, capital less than $50,000, though there are some versions of that definition. Our capital, in fact, we lend up to $200,000. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're not just micro, but we're small business lending as well. And when you think of a micro uh, business per se, we're talking about really your small neighborhood, mom and pop shops, professional, professional service companies, uh, retailers. Um, those small businesses that really make up, you know, our economy, they're the ones fueling, you know, the growth in economy, providing jobs to individuals who live in, in communities. And so when we say microfinance, we're talking about providing capital to support those types of businesses. Along with the name change, what are some of the other changes Greenwood Archer Capital has made? So um, we're very, very excited. Uh, the name change was huge. It took us about a year to kind of figure out what we will call ourselves. And I'll tell you about some of the other changes, but I do want to make sure and make a point to tell you what our name means okay. and what it signifies. And so Greenwood and Archer is actually the intersection and what was Tulsa, Oklahoma's Black Wall Street. And that intersection was the epicenter of where many thriving businesses, you know, lived. And so we see our work as being rooted in the growth of small businesses. And so that name fully encaptures, you know, the, the work that we've been doing, particularly for black businesses here in Chicago. So along with the name change, we have a new mission. Now, when I say new mission, we've been doing the work. Our mission speaks to that work, but we wanted to make sure that we were very clear um, and, and very um, purposeful um, in that mission. And so it's a pretty bold mission. And that mission is that we lend our knowledge and our capital to reverse the impact of institutional racism, to build vibrant and strong black communities, and lead an environment led by purpose. So um, really bold, um, really powerful, and we're really excited about that. In addition to our name change, we also increased our loan offerings. Okay. So um, I mentioned before that we're lending up to 200,000. Well, before we were lending and offering loans up to $100,000. Mm -hmm. 
But with our rebrand, um, we also created a new product and it's called Your Forte, Our Finance. And it is a collaboration with Matt Forte, former running back from the Chicago Bears, who is a Chicago, um, he, he loves Chicago businesses and wants to support Chicago businesses. Well, we came together and figured out, you know, what could we do to support those black owned businesses that did not have access to commercial real estate. Okay. Um, and so we created a product that provided 100% financing with rates right now as low as 3% to support black owned businesses that wants to buy commercial property for their business to occupy. Okay. We wanna create wealth. Um, we want to help black businesses build assets. And so that was also another exciting thing that came with the name change. There's more though. We also introduced a new equity product. So as part of our rebrand, our tagline is funding equity. And that equity, that definition means a lot of different things to us. It means social equity, it means financial equity. But playing off words, we wanted to make sure that black owned entrepreneurs, black owned businesses had access to all forms of capital. So with our rebrand, we introduced an equity investment product um, that's only offered right now for a short time. Um, and it's being offered to four black owned businesses whose business aligns with our four core programs. And that application uh, can be found on our website. And it is um, $25,000 of equity that we're offering along with our rebrand. So really excited about you know the new changes that came along with that rebrand and our new name. Since its founding in 2012, how has Greenwood been able to help with wealth building in Chicago communities? You know, our existence um, in terms of our organization and our work um, is, is founded on creating and building wealth, particularly building generational wealth for black owned businesses. So since 2012, our program has helped to deploy over $18 million in loans and grants to small businesses other low moderate income individuals, um, operating businesses, um, startup businesses, you know, uh, previously incarcerated individuals who have returned from prison and an, are, are entrepreneurially minded. Those products has helped to support, you know, folks like that that are ignored oftentimes. And so since inception, we have helped over 1,600 businesses. And those businesses in turn have employed over 4,000 folks. So you're talking about 4,000 jobs that have either been created um, or have been retained just as a result of the work that we're providing. And when you think about those jobs, you're thinking about now a family household, wealth has uh, increased or e and income has increased. You know, um, our products, we have a couple of core programs. One is called PERC, but that program uh, supports returning citizens. And so through our efforts, we've helped to reduce recidivism for those folks that, you know, may have come out of prison and may not have had a, employment opportunities, but they had an opportunity to seek capital so that they can start a business. You know, our loans have helped improve commercial spaces in, in low moderate income communities. You think about, you know, a lot of the abandoned retail spaces. You know, we have folks that are getting capital to go in those spaces and now open up businesses and provide much needed resources to underserved communities. We're increasing dollars um, and allowing those dollars to circulate and stay in our communities a little bit longer. So very, very excited about the work that we've been doing since 2012. What is Greenwood doing to tackle racism and how much of a roadblock has that been to small business owners are seeking loans to start, sustain, or expand their businesses? Yeah, so, you know, um, I started my career in commercial lending, mm -hmm. and uh, I worked at community banks, I worked at national banks, and as a banker, I saw the difficulties and challenges that small business owners faced with trying to get access to capital, right? So you may have folks that have imperfect credit scores, and that could be due simply to life issues, right? It could be due to a loss of job, divorce, medical issues. I mean, you know, life throws its challenges at you and right. sometimes that score is impacted because of that. And because of scores, credit scores sometimes, folks weren't able to get capital. 
Another barrier that I saw was collateral. Um, there's this ratio called loan to value ratio that most all banks adhere to. And um, you know, when seeking out a small business loan, you're gonna have to pledge some form of capital if you're going to a conventional or traditional bank. Most folks' um, assets lie in their homes um, or other you know, real estate investment assets. Well, if you think about um, black businesses, black entrepreneurs, low moderate income individuals, well, their biggest asset might be their home. But you think about what's happening in our communities. You know, historically, you know, we've experienced redlining. We've experienced, um, you know, uh, blocking access to capital. We, we, you know, know that there's a correlation between property values in our neighborhood versus property values in other neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. We don't have the same amenities that will allow our location and our area to appreciate its assets the same way. Mm -hmm. We're already at a disadvantage if we're looking to pledge any equity that we may have. And then you think about the component of equity. Well, on the other side, it's how much we are paying for debt, right? Many times we're paying higher interest rates, um, maybe because of credit challenges or other factors that, you know, a lot of times have been because of historical systems and things put in place. So our programs are introduced with the intention of reducing those barriers to capital. And so um, every product that we introduce is introduced with a purpose. So our product that allows 100% financing to folks wanting to purchase commercial real estate, because we notice that, you know, we, we don't, black individuals, black entrepreneurs in general, we don't have historical wealth, generational wealth that has been passed to us. Mm -hmm. We may not have 20 or 30% to put down towards a property. And so we want to make sure that we're creating products that, you know, are accessible to black entrepreneurs. And so, um, you know, we're leading with purpose. And so our whole mission, you know, speaks to the question that you just asked. Our mission is to reverse the impacts of institutional racism with introducing innovative and flexible, you know, capital. And, and that means all forms of capital so that businesses can take advantage of and grow thriving businesses and start thriving businesses. Where does Greenwood get its capital and how does that capital enable it to help more people so they can help the community? Great question. So uh, we are a nonprofit uh, organization and so uh, we're in the business of lending. And so a small portion of our um, capital um, comes from interest that we earn off the investments that we make. But we're talking about micro loans, small loans. We're not charging lots in interest rates. So we're not generating that much money in, in earned income. So as a nonprofit, we still need to write for grants. Um, and many banks that may not have been able to approve someone looking for capital on one end want to make sure that they're, you know, providing resources to small businesses in different ways. And they do that through investing in us. And so as a CDFI, many banks that have Community uh, Reinvestment Act obligations to ensure that they're giving back to the communities where their branches are, they invest in our organization. So we get bank for grants, many foundations and other philanthropic organizations who have mission priorities that are aligned with ours, also provide grants and other donations to our program that allow us to relend to small businesses in this way. And, you know, of course, we're also a CDFI, so we're recognized by the U.S. Department of Treasury. And so there is a competitive grant that we actually write for every year that provides a, a good amount of funding uh, for us to deploy back into communities and then finally, we are an SBA micro intermediary lender as well. So we do have the ability to tap into other government resources um, so that we can relend to small businesses in our community. During COVID-19, how was Greenwood able to help small business owners and entrepreneurs? We're still in this pandemic and, <laughs> you know, in, in 2020 um, and 2021, you know, we, we've seen times that um, we well, we times that we have never seen before, right? And so um, we knew that as a lender, we wanted to make sure that um, we offer responsible products 
we offered solutions and not just um, band-aids. We did not want to um, deploy debt per se, right, to businesses that are suffering during the pandemic because these are emergency funds, right? We want to make sure that whatever capital we do put out is in the best interest of the business for the long term. And so we knew very early on that promoting lending aggressively was not the way to help small businesses get through the crisis, right? We wanted to make sure that we looked at other solutions that we could provide in terms of grants. And so we uh, actually created our own grant program. Uh, but uh, before we started to deploy that, we partnered with the city of Chicago. We partnered with the state of Illinois and Cook County and helped it administer grants to small businesses. And so during COVID and during that time, we deployed about $13.6 million in grants to small businesses across the city, across the county, across the state. We also, for our portfolio, provided deferments of loans on a, a you know, global basis to all businesses um, for at least three months. And then for those that needed additional time, we were able to do that because of the flexible capital that we received from our funders. We also utilized certain CARES Act funding offered through the SBA to help small businesses get infusions of cash. Many food restaurants, um, I'm sorry, food service businesses and restaurants um, that really were suffering the most, those in the hospitality industry, we really worked with them to provide grant-like products um, so that they can have that capital to continue to operate. And then we also provide technical assistance to a lot of businesses too. We ensured that our small business network had access to all the grants that were available. We helped them apply for those grants. We helped folks get ready for PPP. As you all know, in the first round of PPP, it was really, really difficult for a small business to be able to apply because many banks were prioritizing their own existing customers. So we worked aggressively with our bank partners and got our small business networks connected with those bank partners so that they could take advantage of PPP, IDLE, and other programs that were out there. Where can people go to find out more about Greenwood Archer Capital? Well, with our rebrand, we have a wonderful, exciting new website. That website is www.greenwoodarchercapital.org. I'll say it again. It's www.greenwoodarchercapital.org. And on our website, you'll find information about all of our programs. You'll be able to sign up to our newsletter so that we can continue to send you information and updates and highlights of our program. And then you can also follow us on social media. We're on all platforms, including LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So please reach out to us, get in touch with us. We'd love to help you out. Before we wrap up, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Well, I will say um, that we've been doing this work since 2012, we're not a new organization. We're just a new organ. We're just we're just operating under a new name, um, and we're being more intentional about the work to serve and empower Black-owned businesses. So we're not a bank. We are a CDFI. We are a responsible lender in this space, and we're doing our part to to really assist and empower Black-owned, low moderate income entrepreneurs looking to start and expand their business. So we would love to speak with you if you have capital needs. Our goal is to ensure that Black-owned businesses have access to all forms of capital. So I would say follow us on social media, check out our website. We do have some exciting initiatives ahead and uh, that's all I can tell you right now. The okay. rest is up to you to follow us and, and find out how. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Remember to make plans to join us again next week for Conversations with the Citizen, the place where real news can be heard. Okay, take it off. <laughs> Thank you.